Happy Thursday afternoon to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. It's time for your tropical update. We usually do that around 4 p.m. every afternoon throughout the remainder of hurricane season. Of course, hurricane season goes all the way through the end of November, so we've got a ways to go. We have now jumped into the month of August and typically the most active period where we have the most number of tropical systems is usually between August and the end of September. So we're really watching things closely out in the Atlantic, the Caribbean, the Gulf, the Eastern Pacific to see if we can get something going. Right now, we don't have a whole lot in the Atlantic. This area of disturbed weather is what used to be a tropical wave that had a pretty high chance of becoming a depression or tropical storm Emily at the beginning of the week. But now this tropical wave has fallen apart. It's kind of merged with this frontal system here and now there is a 0% shot for any type of development. So this certainly will not become Emily because it really doesn't have a chance to become anything tropical anymore. So let's head farther south close to the west coast of Africa and notice we've got a train of tropical waves rolling off the coast. We've got one rolling off of the coast there. We've got one here that's already come off the west coast of Africa. That one is looking pretty healthy. And then we've got a weaker looking area basically a disorganized area of showers and storms off to the west of that. These are all pushing west across the Atlantic and we'll have to watch them and see if they're able to get more organized. However, at this point, the National Hurricane Center is not thinking that these will become any sort of a tropical system over the next 48 hours. There's still a good amount of that Saharan dust out there, that dry air. So that's really going to work to keep those systems pretty weak. We will likely start to get rid of some of that dust over the next few weeks, but until that happens, it's gonna take a lot for those storms to rapidly develop. As far as the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea, we are looking pretty good. A few clusters of showers and storms here and there over towards the Yucatan Peninsula, parts of Cuba, but in the Caribbean for much of the Gulf, very quiet. We still have that huge heat dome parked very close to our area, and so that actually helps to steer away any tropical action from us, so things are looking pretty good. This is where we have the most action and it's still in the eastern Pacific. We've got Hurricane Dora and you can see that eye kind of filling in just a little bit. It doesn't look quite as defined and impressive as it did yesterday, but Dora rapidly strengthened from a tropical storm to a hurricane and early this morning it was all the way up to a category four hurricane but it is still considered a major category three hurricane at this point so it's got winds of 120 miles per hour those are the maximum sustained winds movement is west at 18 miles per hour and that pressure down to around 900 58 millibars. So you can see it is going to maintain that major category three hurricane status through Friday afternoon 1 p.m. Still around 115 miles per hour, 100 mile per hour category two hurricane by Saturday at 1 p.m. It should weaken to a category one as we go into early next week as it continues that west southwest for track Tuesday 1 p.m. down to 85 miles per hour and look where it is concerning where the Hawaiian Islands are. So the good news is that it will pass pretty far south of the Hawaiian Islands. So if you have a nice quick fun trip planned to parts of Hawaii, maybe Waikiki Beach, the big island of Hawaii, definitely you won't have to worry about Dora. It looks like it should stay pretty far south. There's one other wave that we're still monitoring with a high chance for development, at least over the next seven days. This one is still pretty close to the southwestern Mexican coast, not far from Acapulco tracking off to the west northwest it's basically going to kind of ride almost parallel to that southwestern mexican coast and push up towards puerto vallarta over the next few days it's got a 30 percent shot for development over the next 48 hours but a really good chance to develop into the next tropical depression or tropical storm in the eastern pacific over the next week i did mention that saharan dust out there you could see that plume of dust rolling west across the atlantic notice that there are some breaks a few more breaks in this dust out there but there's still quite a bit. So those tropical waves in the Atlantic that I showed you earlier will have to kind of fight against that dusty dry air out there to develop. So we're hoping that keeps the development chances pretty low because we don't want any big storms blowing up and becoming hurricanes and threatening parts of the U.S. anytime soon. 
we've got the dust, but we also still have very warm waters out there well into the 80s, even 90 degree readings close to the southern coast of Florida. So I do think that dust will probably start to fade over the next few weeks. So once that happens, we've got extremely warm water out here close to 90 degrees for the uh, Caribbean for the Gulf of Mexico. So once that dust clears, once we start to get these systems developing, this very warm water, almost near record warm water, will act as fuel for those storms as they try to develop for the rest of this month and especially for September. Of course, we've had four named systems so far for this season. Back in January, we had that subtropical storm during the winter time that wasn't named, but it was later deemed to be subtropical. So that is technically included. So really five systems so far for this season. But if we do get any additional action in the Atlantic Basin, the next names on the list would be Emily, then we would head to Franklin, Gert, and then Harold. These are the rest of the names that we would go through for the remainder of our hurricane season. I'm certainly hoping that we don't get that far to where we have to use all of those names. We hope things stay quiet, but of course we know that things can change in a hurry and it only takes one storm to impact this for us to have a really bad hurricane season. This is something else that's important. This is a change for today. The Colorado State University forecasters did another update to their hurricane season outlook. So this latest outlook is as of today, August 3rd. The last update was July 6th. The good news is that nothing has changed really with this latest update. They're still going for 18 named storms, nine hurricanes, and four major hurricanes, but that is still considered above normal for the season. We've got sea surface temperatures in the tropical Atlantic near record warm levels, but we've also got a strengthening El Nino in the Pacific. So those two are kind of fighting against each other. So there's still some uncertainty in this forecast, but bottom line, they do feel that it will still likely be an above normal season. Normally we would have 14 named storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. So we've still got a long way to go. You may think we're kind of in a lull. It's kind of dull, boring, nothing's going on out there right now, but we've still got to get through the most active period of our hurricane season between now and the end of September. Then we've got to get all the way through the end of hurricane season, which goes all the way through the end of November. So as I always say, don't let your guard down. Make sure that you have your plan in place. Don't wait until we're threatened by a tropical storm or hurricane. Make sure you have the insurance that you need. Review those plans. If you don't have the coverage you want, you may want to talk with your agent about trying to get the coverage you want. Make sure you have your hurricane emergency kit for you and your family ready to go. And also make sure you know your evacuation routes if you live in an evacuation zone. Also, another great thing to have, we're always playing on our phones, so it's always great to have some important apps on there. And Fox 26, the weather app, is a very important one. You can get your tropical updates. Of course, anything happening, any alerts, any watches, any warnings with the tropics or with our local weather will pop up as long as you turn those alerts on. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade.